If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. For part A, in order to calculate the electric field between the plates, we recall that the electric field is equal to the potential difference divided by the distance between the plates. Now, the distance between the plates was given to us, as was the potential difference, so we can plug directly in. Notice that we have to change the millimeters into meters by multiplying it by 10 to the minus 3. And when we plug in the known values, we get an electric field strength of 1.11 times 10 to the 4th volts per meter. If you needed to express that as kilovolts per meter, you could just divide this quantity by 1,000, and that would put it into kilovolts per meter and give you an answer of 11.1. For part B, to calculate the capacitance, we recall that that is equal to a constant multiplied by the area of the plate divided by the distance between the plates. We've already talked about converting the distance into standard units. The area of the plate needs to be converted into meters squared. So to do that, what we can do is set up a conversion in which we say that one meter is 100 centimeters, but because the centimeters are squared, we would have to square this entire conversion factor. And when you do that, you would get 7.6 times 10 to the minus 4 meters squared. So that's going to go in for the area. So we've plugged in all the known values. We have the constant, as mentioned. And when we compute this, we get approximately 3.74 times 10 to the minus 12 farads. If you need to convert that into picofarads, you would just divide by 10 to the negative 12. And that would give you 3.74 picofarads. Finally, for part C, to calculate the magnitude of charge on each plate, we can simply multiply the capacitance by the potential difference. We just figured out the capacitance, so we can plug that in, and the potential difference again was 20 volts. And when we compute that, we get approximately 7.48 times 10 to the minus 11 coulombs. And once again, if you needed to convert that to picocoulombs, you just divide by 10 to the minus 12, and you would get 74.8 picocoulombs as the correct answer. And note that one plate would have a charge of positive 74.8 picocoulombs, the other plate would be negative 74.8 picocoulombs. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen, and I will do my best to post a solution to it on YouTube.